stuff now. Okay. So is this your second time to be in Japan? Exactly, yes. So what is your impression about the country? Well, today, unfortunately, I couldn't see much, but last time mm -hmm. we were here, uh, my expression is that everything is very clean and very, mm -hmm. um, actually, high class, comparing to other places where we've been before. And people are very polite. This is mm -hmm. what I totally like. The mm -hmm. people are totally polite and friendly and, and, and caring. Mm -hmm. and Real, so I have the best impression. Oh, great. So you, you're from originally Germ Germany. Oh, right. Now you yes. live in Switzerland most of the time. Mm -hmm. and what, what is the reason you moved to Switzerland? I guess I, you know, I'm so much on the road that I wanted to have a place where people don't know me and where I can oh, be, you know, you have a private time. Big set privacy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Lacrimosa's music is very mixed, lots of the, you know, very varied influence I heard. So, uh, what is your, the biggest musical background? Gothic rock, heavy metal, classical music? Actually, it's 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 a three. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I listen to when I listen to gothic, mm -hmm. I'm missing the um, the hard guitars. I'm missing oh, the power. Mm -hmm. When I listen to metal, I'm missing the the emotions. Mm -hmm. When I listen to uh, classical music, I'm missing guitars and drums. <laughs> so the idea was actually when I, I thought like. Why can't there be a band that combines all mm -hmm. that? And um, I was looking for bands and couldn't find anything, so I started my own band. That was actually the kickoff. So you make the music you want to listen to. Exactly. Ah, okay, great. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so, what? Who are the, the biggest influence? I mean, artists, classical composers, heavy metal players, whatever. So who are the biggest influence? Well, in actually, music? speaking classically, um, the, it's actually Mozart. In the metal scene, it's definitely Metallica, mm -hmm. and in the um, gothic scene, it's bands like Bauhaus and Joy Division. Mm -hmm. These are my roots. Uh, Mozart. So you took the Lacrimosa from the Requiem, with Mozart, exactly. Bauhaus. So are you officially trained as a classical musician? No, no, I, um, I, no, I never had any lessons or anything. Mm -hmm. So did the classical arrangement you do it by yourself, to your own way? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I mean, I had 25 years time to practice. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, the, the, how do you describe your music? At first, I, I found Lacrimosa in the context of, uh, you know, so-called Neue Deutsche uh, Todeskunst. It, that was actually a, a joke from a German journalist. Oh, it was a joke? Yeah, uh, that's funny. Because it used to be in the 80s in Germany, there was some kind of music scene, they called it uh, Neue Deutsche, um, Neue Deutsche Welle, yeah, mm -hmm. it means like a new, new German way. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the, the thing was that the artists were singing in German, which was very unusual before in Germany. Mm -hmm. So, then when Lacrimosa and some other bands started and singing in German, mm -hmm. he, he wrote this article like, oh, now that's the Gothic part of it, so, and he called it Neue Deutsche mm -hmm. uh, to, to but actually, uh, that was just meant as a joke, and none of those bands ever considered themselves to be something like that. Now, I would consider Lacrimosa to be, um, yeah, well, actually, it's now music style, um, because we combine so much stuff. Mm -hmm. But when people ask me, what kind of music do you do, I mostly say uh, rock music with classical influences. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so, so do you listen to a lot of heavy metal stuff besides Metallica? Yeah, actually, I was in the 90s, I was very much into all those death metal bands. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Like, Go First and then... And Go First. Paradise yeah. Lost and all, all that stuff, Benediction and stuff. Um, that was really, like, a big thing. And um, at the moment, I'm listening to... I don't know if, if there's even a name for it, but, like, female grindcore bands. Like, I, I, I love bands like Butcher Babies or, or In This Moment or mm -hmm. Arch Enemy. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually what I'm listening to at the moment. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I, I know you were into heavy metal, but I didn't know you were you know, into that kind of extreme stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's it, I, it definitely, it's got to be extreme. I mean, if I, you know, if I wouldn't be into the, 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 always the, the, the deepest and the hardest and the, you know, mm. then Lacrimosa would be more a pop band, I, I think. So, mm. what I do myself is, in my kind of way, also very extreme. Um, but um, it's of course different kind of music. Mm. Um, but I don't like music that goes in there and out there. No, just the background music. Yeah. Or, uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So I think the Lacrimosa is very popular in Europe. Uh, besides Europe, we were very popular in Mexico and uh, countries like China. Yeah, especially uh, Mexico, Latin America, anyway, that's mm -hmm. actually the, the way of the, the most fans. It's mm -hmm. really interesting, yeah. Is Gothic rock very huge in, in Latin America? No? I've never heard about that, but Lacrimosa seems to be very big and yeah. you charted on that. That's actually, um, you know, when, when we played the first concert in, in Mexico, mm -hmm. I remember there were like girls in the, in the audience wearing like uh, metal shirts from, for example, Megadeth or Metallica, mm -hmm. but having gothic makeup. Oh. So they, they didn't know, they just thought, okay, that's, that's something dark and it, must, and it looks like this, so that gothic didn't exist that time there. Mm -hmm. And still, there is no gothic scene there. I think that the, the, the thing with La Cremosa is, um, they like it so much because it's so emotional and they are by heart so emotional, it's their culture. Mm -hmm. um, and a combination of that, I think that uh, attracts them. Mm -hmm. What about China? Well, they actually I didn't find out yet what uh, attracts Chinese people so mm -hmm. much about La Cremosa because maybe it's, they, are not, um, they are not raised to show their emotions, they are not raised mm -hmm. to uh, to be that yeah emotional and when then a band comes mm -hmm. to tell them come on it's it's okay you can really get in touch with your inner uh, blood mm -hmm. to your inner person then it might be a, s a door that mm -hmm. opens you know mm -hmm. they realize that there's something more than what other other artists tell them mm -hmm. okay so do you see any difference between the audience in Europe and uh, other countries like right? Mexico China that yeah yeah. Uh, like in, in Mexico or in Russia, actually, yeah, Russia, we have also a huge audience. There, the people are, um, Lacrimosa is everything for them. Like, either they're, they're fans and then their whole life is Lacrimosa, mm -hmm. or yeah, they don't care. Um, in Europe, it's more like, yeah, it's a cool band, but this is also cool and this is also cool. It's mm -hmm. not so, they're not so 100% like giving, giving, devoting themselves 100% to it. And I feel like in China, for example, now, the last days, yeah, people, people actually are also more getting into it like, like in, in, in Latin America or in Russia. Mm -hmm. It's also, it seems to get also more extreme. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there were people, lots of people with like tattoos, uh, with Lacrimosa or Tito Wolf or our logo and stuff. So they're really like, okay, now that's, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. So they're very dedicated. Yeah. To the band. So you, you are a German, so being a German, does it influence, does it affect your music, you think? Actually not, I mean the only thing is that I speak or that I sing in German because that's my mother tongue and the reason why I do this is I want to express myself the best way I can and that's of course the easiest in your mother tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise there are no German influences actually in my oh, music. Really? It's because you know, in Germany, because classical music is a part of your life, that's what I heard. You know, compared to the people from the U.S., yeah. they don't know, you know anything about classical music. But if you live in Germany, you know the Beethoven, Mozart, or whatever. It's just you usually know their you know, famous you know, pieces. Okay, you're right. That's that's <laughs> absolutely true. Those are things I don't even think about because wow. it's a normal. It's still normal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> okay, so could you name? Three all time your favorite albums. The Black Album from Metallica. Um, the, the Final Cut from Pink Floyd. And um, well, actually, let me let me also put in the Requiem from Mozart. I mean, it's not an album. He didn't design it as an album, but yeah. Mm. Did you have any preference? No. It was the, the the conductor or. Oh, yeah, for, actually for, there for is um, uh, Herbert von Karajan, he made two, yeah. von Karajan, he made two recordings mm -hmm. and I prefer the one from 76 mm -hmm. with a uh, Berlin Philharmonica. Yeah. That's so atmospheric. Yeah. Okay. So could you recommend some newer, younger bands? Do you like any? Younger bands. I mean, at the moment I'm listening, it's not a young band, but I'm listening much uh, to Archive. Um, but a real young band. Um, 
the problem is that this is real. I'm listening a lot to music, but mostly to the music I kind of know already because there's so less time to find new music. Uh, like for example, now on, on this tour, my, my MP3 player broke down, so I had to um, get new music. And of course, then I didn't didn't check out like, oh, is that good? Or is that good? I just bought those albums, mm -hmm. which are the most important now to me. Which was, for example, now um, yeah, the, the the new one from Art Enemy and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, but the real baby band, I don't know at the moment. <laughs> Do you have any bands? Uh, with whom you feel sympathy, you know, maybe who had the same vision as Lacrimosa. Because in Lacrimosa it's very unique, you know, different mm. from other bands, but do you have any other bands you feel sympathy with? Yeah, um, I always like if bands do their own stuff, if they have their own approach to something, and if they're not copying. You, you might remember like in the 80s, every second graphic band was, was listening to uh, Sisters of Mercy, and they also sounded like Sisters of Mercy. Um, and the others sounded like Kids of Nephilim. Mm -hmm. So I, I like uh, when, when people have their own approach. And um, so, for example, um, I don't know if it's known here, a good friend of mine who is uh, doing VNV Nation, that's an electronic band. Mm -hmm. uh, it's totally different music. Mm -hmm. And the fans, the, the, the fans of his band, they hate our fans, and our fans hate his band. But would, we are good friends, and we like. Each other's music. What is the problem? This is totally funny. <laughs> what, what do they call B? B and B Nation. B and B Nation. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, so uh, for the last, can you give the message to the Japanese fans? To the Japanese Helpers. Fans? So, we're totally happy to be back. As I said in the beginning of the interview, it's so sad that we didn't have much time mm -hmm. now to you know, walk around and then. But I hope it's not the last time that we come, and that's actually up to you. Because if you guys listen to La Cremosa and if you support us, we have the chance to come back. So thank you for your support until today, and hope to see you also in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.